Great, thank you so much. Uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today. Uh, I'm going to be talking with you about a something that's very, very, it's been very important to me and a, a very important part of, of what I've been involved with over the last several years. Actually, this is 11 years in the making. So uh, we've been working on this this particular project for quite some time. Uh, waste separation, solid separation is, is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, every once in a while, you may see, if you're looking at the screen, you may see some subliminal messages come across. So uh, you kind of need to know that uh, manure does happen. And we have to figure out how we're going to address that. And one of those issues uh, is tying in with this solid separation technology. And this is a document that we've been working on for quite some time. You know, as, as we work with landowners, as we uh, deal with livestock issues, it, it actually becomes like a puzzle. We've got all these pieces and parts, and we've got to try to put these pieces together to come up with a, a, an operating system for the landowner that can keep them not only in production, but also maybe come up with, with some alternative uh, sources for their, their manures, the nutrients, and those types of things. So as, as we move on, we, we, as we, we go through the different situations, we, we talk about different alternatives, we look at some of the different options that are out there. Many times we need to come up with some type of a reference document, something to help you uh, to make those decisions, help the landowner decide what is going to be best uh, for that. And solid liquid separation is one of those issues where uh, as, as we look around trying to find a, a good reference source to, to do that, to help bring all the pieces together so we can come up with a viable project for the landowner. And, and I really feel that this document is one of those that could be utilized not only within RCS, but, but uh, for any individual who's looking to deal with, with waste separation, whether that's a technology provider, uh, a technical service provider, or uh, again, a, a federal employee such as NRCS. What I'm going to talk about today is I want to just discuss a little bit about the purpose of the document, spend just a couple moments talking about what was done to put this document together, look at some of the, the contents of that document. I also want to show you how to find it because uh, finding federal documents, handbooks, are not always the easiest thing in the world to do. So I'll, I'll give you the, the actual link to, to where to find this document. And then I'm, I'm going to wrap things up by doing a couple examples of how can you actually use this document to help in, make, in making some of those decisions. Within the Natural Resources Conservation Service, we have what we call conservation practices. And we use those practices to address resource concerns. For livestock operations, waste management, manure management, nutrient management, we have more than 20 of these practice standards. And because of the number of standards that we have, we need to make sure we have good reference documents to link to those standards so we can give good, good quality products to our landowners. One of those standards is what we call the waste separation facility. It kind of sets the sideboards as to what we're looking for in dealing with various waste separation technologies. And that's, that's fine, but it doesn't really give you any of the technical background. It does not give you the design process. It just gives you the criteria. So again, that was one of the reasons for putting together this particular document to help to satisfy some of the needs for this waste separation uh, facility standard and also how the impacts of doing waste separation can impact some of the other standards, such as waste treatment or uh, the waste storage facilities, how much material is actually going into your storage uh, operation. So we needed that document to help to provide some planning and some design information for waste separation. And as we looked at this, we wanted to, to, to not be restrictive to what's just out there today. We wanted this document to, to kind of uh, be a document that could be used uh, in the future for innovative technologies as they come out. So we made sure that we included theory in this document. And I know some of you are saying, oh boy, theory. Well, I think it's really an important part of this overall document. So it, it does have longevity. So you can go in and have an understanding of, of, of what technologies are out there and how the technologies actually function and how you come up with, with some of your, your values that are determined. 
Also, it's to help the landowners decide what is the best choice for their operation. You may have two facilities that are right next to one another, same number of animals, same type of animals, but yet there, there's a different operation and maintenance that that's, uh, occurs between the two operations. So you may have to look at a different uh, type of technology. This document should help to do that. Also, we wanted to have some examples that could be illustrated to show these various technologies and how they actually perform on farm, how you can actually uh, determine uh, some of the values that are related to uh, these, these various technologies. We wanted to look at, at, again, some of the innovations. We had the use of the coagulants and the flocculants that would help to improve the separation performance of these various technologies by in improving the amount of, of total solids that are being removed and also phosphorus and other nutrients. We want to provide that guidance on, on other technologies, especially for some of our dairies that utilize sand for their bedding. We wanted to address the sand-laden manure. What are some things that we can do with that? And then we wanted to look at, at you know, how well do these systems perform? not only just as an individual technology, but how do they function together uh, as, as various unit, proce unit processes are brought together, how, how, do, how will they actually function and operate on uh, a specific operation. Now, as we look at the contents of this document, and I'm just gonna cover this fairly briefly, uh, first thing it's gonna be looking at, you know, what are the methods? And what do I mean by that is what, what different technologies out there and, and how, are the separation processes occurring? Is it based on the density of, of the, the manures? Are we looking at size? Because all of these, these different variables will impact how the manures are going to be separated and also what technologies are going to be chosen. We also included, I think it's really important part, looking at the manure characteristics. As you read through this document, you're going to see that the, the age of the animals, the, the sex of the animals, uh, how they're housed, all of those are gonna have an impact on the separation processes that are out there and the performance of those systems that are there. And then as we get into the theory, we're gonna be looking at some of the ba basic fundamentals. If you're gonna use a screen, how does a screen work? How does it function? Uh, it's gonna talk about things such as entrainment, uh, how, how do we actually collect more solids than you would, would theoretically compute uh, through entrainment by screening? Uh, settling processes, and, and then also this issue called hindered settling is, is really a big factor if your material is not dilute enough. Uh, you're going to have interactions with particles that will impact the, the performance of your separation system, and this, this document does a real good job explaining that. Uh, we also go into system performance. Uh, this is another one of those in, in, interesting and important factors that when you're working with uh, technologies, you need to understand how they're reporting their data. Are they looking at it from, from a concentration reduction or, or are they actually talking about a mass removal? That these are two different ways of reporting uh, information and they, they will give you different numbers. So you need to understand what you're looking for and you need to understand uh, what you're reading from your documentation. Uh, here, just for example, uh, this was, this is taken from the document. Uh, we have two dairy operations here and we, we have an inclined screen. We, we have two screens, the same size, two different animal types. We have production, different uh, production levels. We have different amounts of bedding and, and notice the difference between the two, the separate solids produced between the two operations is there's almost a 100% difference, even though you have a similar number of animals and uh, you're using the same screen size. So th there can be huge differences in your results depending on these variables that, that we have, have been discussing throughout uh, this, this presentation so far. Um, also, I talked about that entrainment factor. Uh, here we're looking at some, some swine manure. We can actually see if you look at the entrainment factor over on the, uh, the far right, you're going to see the amount of, of the, the impact of larger particles on smaller particles of actually capturing more. So you can kind of see the, the theoretical versus the actual. 
And, and notice that in most cases, that number is actually smaller. So the theoretical calculation is, is a higher number than the actual captured. And, and why would that be? Well, there's very little large solids within your, your swine manure. So the entrainment factor generally is, is not uh, that big of a factor. Whereas here, we're looking at dairy manure, notice most cases, your entrainment factor is greater than one. So you're actually capturing more solids because of the, the fibrous material that are in the manures than you would through the, the theoretical calculations. So again, this document goes through those, those, uh, those theories, that understanding, so that you, you can, can begin to understand why a certain technology might work better than another. Again, the document goes into some of these high rate separation technologies, looking at coagulants, flocculants to try to improve the separation process. We go through some of these special separation technologies. Again, the, the sand laid manure, uh, geotextiles. Uh, we actually have some sand bed filtration discussions that are in there as well. Uh, this is just uh, to illustrate that factor of, of using, uh, in this case, use a hydrated lime. And you can see the impact. The, of, of what you're getting, uh, it, it's actually the, the uh, reduction in the total phosphorus and the soluble phosphorus before the lime and after the lime. So you can see you're getting a huge reduction uh, of, of those from your, your supernatant material. So other contents, it's going to go through some of your design considerations. Uh, what, what are the impacts of doing multi-stage types of systems? There's a little bit of information in there on cost-benefit considerations. And one thing that, that, again, to try not to date the document, we did not act put actual dollars. We, we put in like dollar signs indicating uh, the cost of this versus uh, another technology. So you can do a comparative cost. And then I would also say that the appendix is, is a very important part of this. If you're interested in, in some different uh, project, actual projects, uh, there was a, an organization a few years ago, Farm Pilot Project Coordination Group, that did about 50 demonstration projects, and many of those focused in on solid liquid separation technologies, and they're summarized in, in this document. So it, again, has, has some really good information uh, to go back and to reference as to why certain things are working the way that they are. Uh, this is just showing, you know, kind of the layout of a system and, and you know, how, it, how the design might actually work and, and how you would, would have to uh, deal with the, the various components of different products. You have a solid product, you have a liquid product. Now, what do you do with the liquids? What do you do with the solids? So again, this, this kind of goes through that, that process. So what did we learn going through this entire, I guess, process of 11 years putting this document together? Well, one thing is, and, and most of you know this, that, that these technologies, the results from them can be impacted tremendously by a, a large number of factors. You may do a calculation and, and for your operation or the one that you're working with, the numbers may not agree because of these various factors. And, and a, a list of a few of those things, uh, you know, you know, talked about the age of the animals, the sex of the animals, how the, the manures are being stored. And we also learn, you know, that the, the selection of the technology is dependent on so many different things. And you have to gather that information ahead of time. You can't just say, well, we're going to put this, this technology in. We need to, to get a good background. And that's where planning comes in. It's such an important part of this to plan with the landowner, to, to deal with those objectives and to meet the goals that that landowner uh, is, is operating or desires to operate. Uh, I, I put this next bullet in because I, I just, so many times we want to consider the price and say, no, that's got to be our dictating factor. Well, yes, price is an important part of the overall, but what you have to think about, you know, how's it going to be operated? What are the operational costs? Uh, what are the, the benefits? Uh, are we going to be able to get a viable uh, byproduct that we can do something with and maybe offset some of the costs? So again, you, you have to think about that when you're working with uh, the, your, your landowners. So now, how do we find the document? Uh, if, if you get a copy or download this, or, or you just want to do a screenshot, 
this will take you right to the document. Uh, you go to what we call our NRCS eDirectives website, and, and there's the, the, the web address. You would then go along the left-hand column. You'll see something that says handbooks. You select handbooks. Then you go into the section engineering, and then select the National Engineering Handbook. And then we're, this document is under the environmental engineering section of that. And then you will go to chapter four. And from there, you can download the PDF version of this document. And this is what it's going to look like. This will be the first page of that document, the first half of that first page. So you make sure that you're, you're getting the right document. So now, how do we use this document? What, what is the benefit of this thing? Well, first off, by the reason I gave so much information in the beginning about the, the different sections is that you need to know what you're looking for. You need to look at the pertin pertinent sections within that document. Are you looking at some innovative technology? Well, maybe you wanna focus in on more on the theory section. If you're dealing with maybe some, some technologies that are uh, more traditional, you might look at some of those, uh, those particular sections within the document to help you and to help the landowner in making those decisions. The next one is you must know the assumptions. And that's why, again, this document's important. It does outline many of the assumptions that are made. You also need to go through the assumptions of any design procedure that you use because that will have an, a tremendous impact on the actual removal efficiencies or separation processes that you're, you're going through. There are a number of example problems in this document and they will help you to understand uh, these concepts. And you just kind of have to walk yourself through them and it'll refer you back to tables and figures so that you can see where they pulled certain numbers so that you, you can understand the concepts behind these different separation technologies. Now, again, remember the separation efficiencies, how well it's going to separate your, your solids or your nutrients. They will range from uh, depending on a number of factors, and, and you have to take that into account when you're actually doing uh, your, your calculations and when you're actually trying to determine what technology you want to use. And I put this figure in the presentation because your waste separation can have a huge impact, especially on the bottom four, um, how you're going to transfer it. If you have a very high solids load, you may have to handle it as a solid. If, if you have uh, much lower solids content, you might be able to pipe that from one place to the other. How's it going to be stored? Again, if you have a lot of solids in it, your storage may accumulate solids over time. And if that accumulates solids, is that going to create an issue? Uh, how's it going to be treated or will you do any treatments? And then finally on this is how are we going to utilize the, the materials? If you do waste separation, you're, you're likely going to have at least two waste streams, a solid waste stream and a liquid waste stream. What impacts will that have on, on the landowner's operation of how they're going to be utilizing that, uh, those, those manure solids and liquids? Or are you coming up with some type of a byproduct to maybe help offset some of the cost or to get some of those nutrients out of the watershed if you have excess uh, nutrients in, in certain parts of, of your watershed or the land that's, that's operated by that landowner? One of the things I suggest, again, is as you are working with the landowner, go through the planning process. Diagram out what the landowner is desiring to do. Understand what the, the manure treatment system is. What, what, uh, what kind of operation do they have? How many animals do they have? What type of animals? How are they housed? And once you under, begin to understand that, then you can start looking at these unit processes, these waste separation technologies to decide and to help the landowner decide what is the best process for them to use. So let me just give you a couple examples to show how you might utilize this document. We're gonna start with the swine operation. Here we have a finishing operation and we, we have uh, the average weight of the animals are 200 pounds. There are eight buildings and we have approximately 700 plus or minus animals per building. They flush this building every day. 
they have anaerobic treatment lagoon and it is nearing capacity what i mean by nearing capacity is that it's it's treatment volume is almost filled with solids it has not been the solids have not been re removed for a number of years and they're trying to extend the life of this treatment lagoon so they they want to uh, what what can they do to to extend the life how can they maybe uh, reduce the amount of solids going in the current solid content of this flushed effluent is less than one percent that's important because that has a uh, an important factor of determining actually which technology you might want to look at. So what would you do? There's a table. Yeah, isn't that nice? They put they provided this table within the document. Uh, and actually, it's the first table in the document. It it goes through uh, some of the the recommended. And and again, notice the first word in there, relative, because th this is not hard in, in stone. This is not you have to do this, uh, and you can't use any other technologies, but this kind of gives you a good rule of thumb of where to look and, and what technologies might work best for this. So since you have such low solids content, some of these other technologies may not function as well. Let, let's just take, for, for example, uh, the screw press, because it does say in here it's not recommended, based on the, the data that's available, or there, there just isn't a lot of data there. Now, what could be one of the issues? Well, number one, remember we're swine, not a lot of fiber, and we have very low solids content. So to, to form that plug that's needed at the, at the beginning of your, your screw press, you don't have the solids to do that. So it's gonna be very difficult to use a screw press for very low solids content. So as we look on here, there's a couple technologies that, that could be uh, maybe focused in on. You have gravity settling, but again, remember you've got low solids and not many fibers. How large of a gra gravity settling area are you going to need? Those are some questions that need to be answered. Uh, use of a centrifuge is a way of, of separating solids from low uh, solid content material. But if you look, centrifuge is a fairly expensive uh, piece of equipment so you need to need to think about those those types of issues when you're working with the landowner so here are some of my thoughts on that okay again low solids content it, it is going to have an impact on what options you're going to focus in on you also need to determine what percentage of the solids do you want removed and if you're going to remove a certain percentage of solids what solid content or moisture content do you want of those solids? Let's say you choose the gravity settling. That's gonna have a fairly high moisture content after you settle some of the solids out. You may still be uh, 85, 90% solids on, on some of those. Centrifuge will, will get it drier, but again, is cost, is that going to be a limitation for this particular operation? Cost benefit, I guess I'm gonna put that down as, as I highlight in that bullet, because it, it, it's not just the cost of the equipment, it's the benefit that you're getting from it as to how that will impact or should or could have an impact on the decision that the landowner is going to make. And then one of the things that this table did not cover, that the, the previous table that I showed you, is if you use chemical enhancements, you could increase the separation efficiency, and you more than likely will, which may allow some of these other technologies to be utilized to uh, improve the separation for that particular operation. Now let's go to a dairy. We have a 500 cow dairy. It has both a free stall barn and a bedded pack barn. They're using sand bedding in their, their free stall barn. The building lanes are flushed twice a day at 3,000 gallons per flush. The landowner wants to reuse the sand. Currently, it's just been going into the holding pond, and they have not uh, been, been reusing the sand. It's been creating some issues of the, the, the holding pond filling up. Also, the, just getting the sand in, in suspension has, has been, uh, it's been hurting the, the equipment. Your agitators are it's eating the blades, and, so, and it's, again, affecting the storage volume in the holding pond. So the question that the landowner asks is, I would like to have a sand lane. 
what size of sand lane do I need? Well, again, you have to understand the assumptions. As you look through this document, there are some assumptions that are, that are inherent in it, and, and they're outlined in there. Number one is that you need to make sure you have a good dilution ratio. It needs to be at least two to one. If it's not, then you're going to have what they call this, this hindered settling, where it's your separation is going to be impacted and reduced. They recommend at least a four to one or higher. Also, if they're going to use sand, it needs to be a uniformly sized sand. Because if you, if you have a, a well-graded sand, then it's, it gives you, it's much harder to separate the, the manure solids from the sand because you're going to have sand and, and manures separate at the same velocities. So that, that's going to have an impact there. Also, uh, the recommended sand lane slope is going to be between 0.15 and 0.25%. So with those assumptions, you go through your example. You have your flow rate through the barn of 3,000 gallons per minute, and that ends up being about 401 cubic feet per minute. You want to look at a contact time within the settling lane. Again, this is outlined. There's actually an example within this document to go through this. You want a contact time between two and four minutes. If you go less than two minutes, you're probably going to have more of your sands going out the end of your, your lane. If you go over four minutes, you're probably going to begin mixing more of your manures in your sands as you get towards the end. Uh, here I chose three. Uh, some use two, two and a half. It really depends on your landowner and, and, and some of those, those particular decisions. So here's, uh, you do your contact time, uh, 401 cubic feet. We're going to do take that over three minutes time. So it ends up being 134 cubic feet per minute. Then we want to calculate the cross-sectional area. For sand settling velocity, it's about, uh, you need to have uh, a foot and a half per second to, to allow the sand to settle, but yet keep the manures in, in suspension. And that ends up being about 90 feet per minute. So the area ends up being, when you take the 134 divided by the 90, you get one and a half square feet for your cross-sectional area of your sand lane. You need to determine the lane width and depth. Your width, many times you want to base it on the equipment that you have available. Typically, it's, it's, 10, or it's 12 to 14 feet, but again, you need to be looking at what type of equipment that you have. So you take your, your depth, ends up being a, an inch and a half. And then based on this, you have a three-minute contact time. At 90 feet per minute, you need approximately 270 feet of sand lane. Now, I also added in a little bit more to establish sheet flow. So uh, estimate about two times the, your width of your, of your sand lane. So it's 24 feet. So 270, 24 is 294. I said, well, let's use 300 feet. And that, that was just, that's just a quick calculation. Now, one thing I, I want you to understand that sand lane calculations is not an exact science. There are a lot of assumptions made a lot of variables that come in to impact uh, maintaining the sheet flow is definitely an issue and I'll show you a picture about that here in just a moment sand removal removal efficiency it's generally between you know 70 to 85 uh, percent I tend to go more on the lower side with the sand lanes because of some of the factors that, that can come into play but 75 percent may not be a bad bad assumption you also will need a sand recovery area to clean that sand out and allow it to dewater if you want to be reusing that, that, that material. Also, you need to understand that manure solids may and will likely, you will not get all the manure solids because of some of these hindered settlings and, and other factors, they will be, uh, still remain within the sands. If you have excess solids, as, we, as it says here in the last point, you can take those excess solids in the sand, move that to the upper end of your sand lane, 
but allow it to run through the system again should help remove some of those solids. Also a factor is the flush water quality can impact the separation effectiveness. The higher the solids content of your, your flush water, generally is the lower the quality of your separation of your sands. And here's just a couple examples to, to show you that, uh, as you can see, uh, you're seeing the meandering nature of this particular system, and you're also seeing at the, uh, the lower end of this first, you're seeing some sands are still getting within uh, the, the outlet. Uh, you're seeing that it's just not maintaining a sheet flow through the entire length of the sand lane. So these factors can come into play and affect uh, the sand separation. The second picture is kind of showing uh, you just started the, the flush and you're seeing the initial wave coming through, but also notice the, the dark nature of, of this material. So you have a fairly high solids content uh, effluent, so that, that could have an impact uh, on, on the separation. So again, some things to think about on that. Uh, with that, I just want to say, uh, give a special thanks to, to a couple uh, organizations and an individual, the Piedmont South Atlantic Coast Cooperative Extension or Ecosystem Studies Unit, the CESU, as they worked with us and Clemson University to, to put this document together. And also a special kudos to Dr. John Chastain. He is the associate professor there at Clemson. He was the one who did the vast majority of the work on, on this particular project.